All right, so I just made this new ellipse. I can have my other ones turned on, and I can have my onion skin turned on. And that new ellipse, I want to make a dark shape, maybe even a black shape. So what do I do? I double click on that thumbnail. I can do solid black in this bottom left hand corner and then say OK. But I don't want it to be that shape. That's really blah. So what I can do is once I'm on the, the right shape layer, I can hit Command T and I'll get my transform box and I can right click within that transform box and I can do my favorite thing, which is warp. This is a way you can get really complex shapes from very simple shapes. So to get this kind of cloud lift to it, <laughs> I can turn it first into kind of a bean shape, like so. And then I can right click and I can scale it and I can stretch it taller. And I can hold down shift to distort it. And then I can right click and I can warp and I can push on the bottom. to get kind of more of a mask shape. Then I can hit return. And then I can hit, it's not quite symmetrical and don't beat yourself up about it. This is what we're learning. And then I can warp it again and kind of push and pull it where I want it. And if I want A more pronounced, whoops, got to use the handles here. More pronounced curve on the inside. I can do that. So what we're doing is we're not adjusting pixels. Instead, we're adjusting the anchors and the paths. And we're actually not even generating anchors. We're just changing the curve paths between the anchors. And we're doing that with what are called Bezier handles with the warp function of transform. So it's kind of like what we were compositing before and kind of different. But we get these funkier shapes and I want it right above the nose. Maybe even a little behind the nose. Maybe a little straighter on the sides. Now, what if I really want them to line up and be symmetrical? First, hit Command R. And make sure your rulers are visible. You want your rulers always visible. So if your rulers are visible at any time, you can click on them and drag down helpful visual guides. And then if they don't show up, you have to go to, within Photoshop, a view show guides. And the shortcut for that is command semicolon. So I can turn guides on and off. Now that will show me that if I want those to end at the exact same place, I just need to drop this one down a little bit. I can also do a center guide that goes right through the middle of the nose. Helps me judge kind of where the curves go. All right. And if you actually scrutinize emojis, because every operating system has to create its own emoji set that it has the rights to use like apple or chrome android um, firefox you know all of these and if you actually scrutinize them and really look at them they are not perfectly symmetrical they are just a collection of handmade vectors kind of like this same thing with typefaces there's only a few that are just like perfectly rendered most user generated typefaces have a lot of wonkiness to them as do a lot of vectors. All right, so these, at any time, I can just turn off my onion skin layer and see what I've got. You can see those anchor points. If you want to not have to see those anchor points, just click off the layer, and you'll see those shapes I've created so far. The eyeballs which are pretty close to what I was able to get with Emoji Maker. I'm going to use the ellipse tool again. I'm going to make them a little bit smaller and I'm going to fill them with white. But I need to make sure, because I had clicked on the bottom layer first, 
to get off of the, the paths. And so whenever you use the shape tool, it's going to place that new shape layer on top of the last layer you selected. So I'm going to move that on top because again, this is like a stack of cutouts. And then I want to fill that with white. It's also going to select the last color I used. And now I can move it. I can use the move tool and move it to where I think it should go. Maybe there. And then instead of having to do that all over again for the other side, instead of using the ellipse tool, I can simply click on that shape layer and hit command J, duplicate it, and then use the move tool and hold down shift and it will lock it on an axis so that it doesn't travel up or down. And then I can use my onion skin guide to kind of place it right where I want it. You can do that same thing with the eyeballs. So I could do a new ellipse and I think I will because I think I might have some fun and tilt it a little bit. Make a new ellipse and rotate it just slightly out. And then I'm going to double click and I'm going to fill it with black. And I'm going to use my move tool. I can do this with the transform box as well. And then looking at the bandit here, I'm going to move that to about there. Now I'm going to hit command J, duplicate it, hold down shift to lock it and put it here. But this is the more complexity you build. Now they're both slightly leaning that way. I want this one to lean out the other way so I can click on it. If I have auto select layer on, it will select that. Why we lock it is auto select layer will not then select the one on top. <laughs> Otherwise, if we have auto select layer on and we want to select from different vector paths, but we have an onion skin layer that's unlocked, it will just always select the onion skin layer because that's transparent over everything. So that's another reason to lock it. But if I click on this one, it will go to the right layer. And then I hit command T and I'm just going to rotate it out the other way just a little bit. Hit return. And this is what I have so far of my own vectors. Now, why recreate it? Well, because these are the actual pixels generated from these vector shape layers. But at any time, I can make it even bigger than 8 inches by 10 inches by 350, and it will still be perfectly clean. I cannot do that with the screen grabs. All right. So already you can see a big difference between how clean that is and how soft that is. So that's why we're creating our own vector shapes. This is a good time to save it. <laughs> we've built some layers, right? Whenever we've built a layer, we want to save it as a Photoshop file. So I go to, to File, Save As, because I want to change the name. And I'm going to call it Spring 23, 2023-1, Carl, exercise number two, bandit, shape, emoji. And I'm going to save it. I mean, I would always recommend just saving it to the desktop so you can see where it's saving as a PSD document that will save all of these shape layers. We haven't rasterized anything. And then I can hit function key F11 to see it. And that's what I'm working on right there. And now to update saving, all I have to do is hit command S while I'm working because I've given it the name I want and it will, it will keep saving it as I build. Okay, next let's build a nose. The nose is kind of a complicated shape. So I'm going to start with an ellipse. I could also start with a triangle, but I'll show you, I guess I can show you both ways. Um, and I will make it a gray shape or a gray color for now, just so it shows up a little bit on top of the black mask. I'm going to move it underneath my onion skinning. Okay, and then I'm going to hit Command T. 
to get the transform box. And instead of using ah, cancel. move tool, command T, instead of using warp and tugging it, I'm going to use distort. And I'm just going to tug it up on that side and then tug it up on this side. Because that can keep symmetry a little bit better than um, than warp does to use distort. So I can kind of even them out. I can even use visual guides to kind of help with that. So what I did is I just broadened the top of it on both sides. And I can narrow the bottom. Bless you. And I did bring in Kleenex for the classroom. All right, now, so distort is a lot subtler. Whoops, I should have said yes. That's a new option. Do you want to change it into a regular path? And yes, I do. <laughs> but Command-T, distort, tug it up on one side, tug it up on the other side, and you can kind of line up the anchor points. Okay, and then, yes, I want to move it under my onion skinning. And now I can Command-T and warp it and kind of flatten the top. This is why even really simple looking shapes like this nose shape are a lot of subtleties of different curves and then kind of pointed at the bottom. Especially if you're trying to make it symmetrical. It's kind of the, the same use of these Bezier curves and anchors on each side. Hit return. And let's see what we've got. Not too bad. If I want to move it, I can use my arrow keys and kind of nudge it in, get it right between those eyes. And if I'm happy with that and don't ever want to have to do that again, Command S, save my work. Okay, I can also see that Bandit doesn't have like a round dome head. He has kind of a flattened head. So I can go back to this earlier ellipse and I can hit Command T. And I can use warp, and I can flatten that top. Should be able to grab it and move it down, but if not, you can use the, the anchors. There it is. And sometimes I might do it in stages. You know, next time that shows up, I'm going to click don't show again because it keeps tricking me. But yes, you do want to transform like usual. So I did it once. Now when I warp it again, it creates a new grid, and that will make it more pronounced when I flatten it and then pull it up on the side like so. And this gets you to pay attention to things like basic shape proportions in the cartoons you like. So, for instance, how close Bandit's mask is to the top of his head. It's very different than the emoji I made on Emoji Maker. So I might want to customize those proportions a little bit. Going back and forth. Put these curves, the handles of the curves in roughly the same places. Hit return. All right. And he does have a little bit of a chin here that I might add.